So in today's video, I'm going to discuss an important topic which confronts students when they have completed grade 10 and are going beyond this particular grade. So at this point, I will presume that you have made a decision to pursue the science stream and you are good in science and so you want to continue with that in your next two classes up to class 12. So at this point, you have to make a decision of whether you want to continue with mathematics or not. That's one basic decision. So there are people who are good in science as it is taught in grade 10, but they may not be so good in mathematics. So again, sometimes what these people do is that they take physics, chemistry, and biology as the subjects in the next two classes. So that's particularly known as the PCB combination in the board system. Now the people who find that they are good in math as well as science, they often go for the PCM combination. That's physics, chemistry, and mathematics. Then there is sometimes the possibility of taking a fourth subject. So some people may opt for computer science here. So there are people who go for physics, chemistry, math, and computer science. And typically this computer science covers a programming language such as Python, Java, or C++. Now there are some people who are good in math and bio, and at this point they need to make a decision as to which one to take. And sometimes people may take both. So there are people who take physics, chemistry, math, and biology, and that's the PCMB combination. And of course, there is a possibility sometimes of taking a business subject as the fifth subject and so on. So now I will try to cast some light on this particular selection based on certain themes. And the basic theme is that you need to think professionally as to whether you want to become a scientist, a technologist, or a medical professional. So these are essentially the three career choices you are looking out for. So let's look at these one by one. Now let's say you are very good in biology, but you are not good in mathematics at the point of class 10. Now this is a situation where you may go for the medical stream or you may go for a science stream also, which is possible in some cases with the PCB combination. So if you are going for the medical stream, you should have a proclivity towards helping people, towards dealing with humans or with life forms. And you should like the concept of studying a large amount of material memorizing this material. And also you should be good at classification and memory. So these are some of the basic traits which are required in a medical doctor. Now, if you study further and you go into surgery, then you must check out your proclivity towards working with live creatures and whether you would be able to do surgery and so on. So again, not every doctor becomes a surgeon. This is only a specialized case. So there is a great need of doctors, for doctors who are general practitioners. So that's something to keep in mind. So next I turn to the people who go for the physics, chemistry, math, computer science type of setup. And these are people who have decided primarily to go towards technology and some may also think about going towards science. So again, I will demarcate the primary difference between an engineer and a scientist. So I think as far as a scientist is concerned, their typical aim is to study theory and create new theory and answer the fundamental questions in the universe. So a scientist may be interested in the various laws, such as the laws of motion, the laws in chemistry, the laws of magnetism and so on. And there are, of course, laws which may still need to be found. And there are a large number of problems which still need to be explored. And so science looks at some of the big picture problems, such as explaining the universe, 
looking at black holes, quantum mechanics, new particles, theories in physics which cover all possible theories and so on. So science is a very big picture situation and in contrast what technologists do is they typically are driven by problems and products. So if you show a particular proclivity towards problem solving in your classes, then you have an inclination towards going for the technology side of the equation. So again, here I would say physics is a good barometer in terms of your proclivity. And I don't mean the books which are used in the typical board. What I mean is books such as Resnick's Physics or Problems in General Physics. And in mathematics, you may look at Loney's Trigonometry and Coordinate Geometry. Or you may look at Piskunov's Calculus or Shantinaran's Calculus and so on. Typically, the problems in chemistry are not as difficult as the problems in physics for most people. So again, this is a situation where you need to keep in mind that if you are particularly good in solving problems in mechanics, optics, magnetism, and so on, then maybe technology is the path for you. In contrast, if you really like the subjects as they are taught in the high school curriculum, which is largely a presentation of theory, and then there are a lot of practicals and experiments, then you may be more cut out to be a scientist. So this is a demarcation you can make at this point and you can decide on your college path based on this particular proclivity and predilection. Now, one of the things which technology people do is that they create product. So one more way to look at yourself is to see whether you are more interested in products or you are more interested in grand theories. So if you are interested in cars, trains, planes, ships, cell phones, cameras, and various such type of things, maybe even laptops, computers, sound systems, and so on, then you have a proclivity towards technology. And you may actually like to work in the technology fields. In contrast, if you are more interested in studying the theory, writing term papers, writing very good notes for the practicals, you are very meticulous in terms of doing experiments in chemistry and physics, and you look at mathematics in terms of some of the fundamental theorems and proofs, and you would like to actually discover some new mathematics someday or prove a theorem and you are more interested in proving theorems or looking at the proofs of theorems than you are interested in necessarily solving a problem then you are probably more cut out towards science so these are some of the things you can look at in terms of your own personality to decide as to whether you want to go for the technology path or the science path now Many people, especially your parents, will motivate you towards going for fields where you can make more money in terms of a quick salary and a high paying salary. Now, it's true that the technology fields can give you more money and may guarantee you a quicker job. And the closer you are to software, the more likely your salary will be more and your job is largely guaranteed, at least at the current point in time. And the more closer you are to hardware, it is somewhat more difficult to get jobs, at least at the current time. Now again, the cycles in terms of growth keep changing. And so these things are kind of cyclical. And so you need to keep that in mind that what is good today may not be good five years or 10 years down the road. Now, as far as pure science is concerned, you may need to do a master's degree, a PhD degree, and sometimes even a postdoc to get a good job in terms of a research scientist or becoming a professor. But there are also a large number of jobs which can, which can be obtained by people who have done a bachelor's degree in sciences. 
and this is especially true because there is a convergence in some of the science disciplines and so you can see this especially in mathematics and statistics where these disciplines are coming closer to computer science and there is the field of data science and similarly you see a lot of merge merging between mathematics and biology in the field of mathematical biology and so on so at the cutting edge of any field there is certainly a requirement for scientists at all level now while science may not straight away get you a high paying job in terms of software if you are interested in long term fame and making a substantial contribution to human knowledge then science is the way to go because as you can see from different prizes such as the nobel prize the field medal abel prize and so on there are a large number of possible discoveries which can be made and which can totally change the direction of human civilization and so again you can think about this in more general terms as to if you want to make money as your primary goal in life or you want to pursue contribution and fame as the particular goal you have in life so these are certain points to ponder and i would say that beside taking input from your parents and your peers you need to also look at yourself look around yourself for different possible role models read a lot of fiction and non fiction and then determine as to who are the role models in the society and the world who actually gel with you so you should not make this decision totally on the basis of the pers- of the prospective salaries you can get at the current time and you can think about some of these possible long term ramifications of the career choice you make in terms of society and how you see yourself when you are 30 years old or 50 year old and so on and how would you like to lead your life when you are no longer there you would like to see your life as having been well spent so that is something to keep in mind as to what have you done in terms of posterity so these were some of my thoughts on terms of choosing the science career path and whether you should become a medical doctor a engineer or a pure scientist and i hope it was useful to you so again stay tuned to my channel for more videos on such topic thank you very much